Alright, so in this video we'll learn how to make a multiplexer using Verilog to design it instead of using discrete logic gates as we learned in the previous videos. We'll be using the same IAC design tools from Xilinx. So what I'm going to do is create a new project and create it so that we can use the hardware description language as our primary means to program it. So I've basically created this new project already. Which is which is named Mux4. It's an empty project and it the uh, preferred design language is going to be very as you may devices. already know that a multiplexer is a device that will basically let you select between its four inputs and based on the selection that you've made on the selection line your output will be chosen from one of the inputs so in order to design this we'll be making a program consisting of a case statement which is which is basically a de definition of four cases for the module and based on a, the case of a certain input the output cases can be defined so I'll show you in a bit how this is written in Verilog we start by defining our inputs Now what this vector symbol means that the input is going to be a 2-bit vector, which is our select line. And the next input is going to be our four, the main four inputs that we have to select between for, for the multiplexer. So I'll just name them as A, B, C, D. And we'll just consider these as single bit inputs. The output for this module will be just one output. Which will be out zero in this case. Now I don't know why but in Verilog you usually have to define your outputs as registers as well especially if you're using your outputs in a case statement or in a if or while loop. I don't know the exact technical details why this is required but you might experience errors if you don't define your output as a register. So also define the output as a register. Now we're just going to use a always block So now what always at star means is that it's going to go through this case statement that we're going to write soon whenever it sees a change in any of these inputs. So usually the always block comes in handy when you're using a clock and you can trigger certain blocks of your program to be executed upon positive or negative edges of a of a clock or a certain input but in this case as we're not using any clocks we're just going to make this case statement get triggered at pretty much any change changes made in the input so this is how you write a case statement
Okay. So what this means is when we write case S0, this means that a program will examine what's what's the input at the select line and based on these four cases of inputs it's going to decide what the output is going to be so in case the input is 0 1 the output will come from B so basically the output will be this input B that we're getting into the module so this is how this module is going to work as a multiplexer for these four cases of select lines. And this is pretty much it for the program. It's a very short program. In the next part of the video, we'll try to test this program by creating a test bench. Okay, so now that we have completely written the program and I've already checked the syntax and it seems to be working so far we're ready to create a test bench for this module so in order to do that I'm going to add a new source and add a Verilog test fixture let's name it mox4 TB and this is the this is the module that we want to associate the test bench with so make sure this is selected. All right, so this is our test bench. And as always, the, the IC Design Suite has created a default program for us to add our test bench to. So we're going to add our test bench in this little slot over here and all we're going to do is test for four different cases of input and check what the output is so I'm going to skip ahead so as to not bore you and move on directly after I've written the test bench okay so I've written the test bench for our program. Now, I've made a little modification just so as to help everyone understand what we're dealing with here. So I've basically just changed all my inputs to 2 bits so that way I could just name them as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and that would help you guys distinguish between the changes in the output. So all I've done is added another bit to all the inputs I've made the output to be two bits and the output register to be two bits so this is what the test bench looks like so what what this does is after waiting for a hundred nanoseconds and resetting everything to zero we're going to define our inputs as a a will be zero B will be one C will be two and D will be three and this is going to stay constant throughout our test. The only thing that we're changing after every 20 nanoseconds is the select line. So we're going to go through all the four cases of the select line. And let's simulate and see what we get at the output. Let's zoom in. And okay. So we're going to rename all these to decimals, so that way it's easier to understand. Okay, so now this is our this is our initial reset point, and after this we have to find our inputs to be 0, 1, 2, 3. And our initial case is the select line being 0. So when the select line is zero, we had defined that the output will come from A, which in this case is zero, because we have defined A as zero. So our output is zero, as indicated here. So that works correctly. Now we move on to the next select line case, where we have defined the select line as 
201. And in this case, our output should come from B, which is 1. And we're getting 1 or here. So that seems to be working right as well. So let's just let's just change our select line back to binary so that way we know what the select line input was. Okay? So for 0 1 we're getting the output from B, which is right. We move on to a third case where the select line is 1 0 and the output should come from C and the output comes from C. So and it's the same with same with the fourth case. The input is 1 1 the output is 3 which is D so this means that our multiplexer works for all the four cases that we do